Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and we're at that time of year again. The Bahrain Grand Prix kicks off this Sunday so today I'm going to be giving my 2022 Formula 1 predictions. Hopefully this can only be better than last year. How this is going to work is I'm going to give my constructors predictions in reverse order starting with 10th place and finishing with 1st. I'm then going to reveal to you all my top 10 predictions in the Drivers' Championship. And at the end again we are going to have 3 bold predictions like 3 other main predictions that I think will happen with this season. So I hope you guys are excited to hear what I have to say. If you are please be sure to smash like on the video, click subscribe and let's dive into it with 10th place in the constructors. And I'm going to go for Williams. Now, that might seem like a bit of a harsh choice, but from what we've seen in testing, Williams have got pretty poor reliability. They just haven't seemed to have got a decent grasp on the regulations. Despite how nice their car looks, I just can't see them suddenly being any closer to the midfield. There were shines of promise last year from Russell outperforming the car, and even Nicholas Latifi at times as well, doing an amazing job for a car that really shouldn't have been getting out of Q1. It was still, it wasn't great. It was just that Russell and Latifi managed to get the most performance out of that vehicle so yeah and I think despite Albon coming in I think they're going to really struggle and have a tough time this season because their car looks slow they look to have lots of reliability issues which is going to cost them points so that's why I think Williams are going to be last this season. The next team I'm going to put in P9 is Alfa Romeo now yeah they They've showed some decent pace on the hot laps, but don't forget that's probably because lots of teams have been sandbagging. You know, they're just probably going to be near the back as well. I can't really see them being a miracle. They'll probably get the odd point. I think Bottas is a good signing for them from Mercedes. He's got the experience being a 10-time Grand Prix winner. I think he'll really help, you know, bring Guan Yu Zhou up to speed in that new car. But again, I just... Not expecting any miracles from them. I think it will be more of the same from Alfa Romeo. P8 is going to cause a lot of controversy. And I know that for a fact. But I'm going to stick with it nevertheless. I have gone for Aston Martin Racing. Now, 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 now. Before you all start shouting at me. Yes, to be honest, I am basing a lot of this on what we've seen on testing, despite the fact that some teams may be sandbagging or some teams may be showing more than what their true pace really is. We haven't seen any racing yet, and the regulation changes obviously coming into effect means that we still really have no idea what is going to happen, what the true pecking order is going to be like. We'll get a proper... I would say we'll get a proper idea sort of three or four races into the season of where everyone is because then we've had a good look. But yeah, Aston Martin, despite the fact their car looks so advanced, they haven't had Mercedes to copy off this year. So, and also I feel like Otmar leaving, you know, I mean, he left the, the fact that Otmar's gone to over to Alpine. I feel like they're going to be... And Lawrence Stroll as well, Getting, to, I feel like he gets a bit too vocal in terms of the way the car is designed and the things the team puts on the car, rather than having an out-and-out -out engineer to do their job. I also feel like, unfortunately, Sebastian Vettel is past his best. I know you guys will all hate me. I still love him the same, of course. And Lance Stroll is obviously can be quick at times, but he's not spectacular. So, yeah, I just feel like Aston Martin, their car is not going to be good this year. So that's why I've put them so far down. P7, I am going for Alpine. Now, this is still something which I'm kind of a bit unsure about because the midfield fight is going to be so close this season. Who knows, maybe even down as far as Aston Martin or maybe even further than that. Maybe there is going to be no clear back markers this year because the new regulations, better racing, it's just going to be so much closer. So literally any of these sort of next three or four teams could finish in any order. But I'm going for Alpine. Now, Alonso and Ocon, they got on together really well last year, which was obviously the total opposite of what I predicted. And they've got BWT coming in, which obviously probably isn't going to affect how the car is. They've shown some relatively promising pace in testing, but equally they haven't absolutely lit up the timing screens, apart from Ocon did on one of his flying laps on the first day in Bahrain. So, again, I feel like maybe that was when they were really trying to showcase their true pace to maybe get people watching them. However, I don't think Alpine will be permanently 
at you know at the they won't be at the front however there might be some races where they are going to score big points so that's why i'm going to get them in p7 p6 i'm going for Haas. now this is a crazy decision but genuinely Haas actually look quite quick this season i mean magnuson is a brilliant signing for them i'm glad k mags come back because he's really going to be a good motivator he's going to be a good mentor as well for mick schumacher that's going to get him more on the pace and the fact that he didn't have anyone to learn off last year meant that it took him a lot longer to get up to speed and get used to the car but also the fact that Haas literally sacrificed their whole last season for this season their car looks good and technologically advanced obviously their nice new livery hasn't got anything to do with that but genuinely Haas might even be in the running for dare I say the odd top six finish this season if things go really well for them I think they are going to be back in the midfield I think they have got a chance they showed that with Kevin Magnussen going fastest they showed that with Mick Schumacher P2 genuinely I think Haas are going to be not the worst team this year they are going to be fighting amongst the midfield runners that could obviously backfire rather rapidly. They might be slowest in Bahrain. But who knows? I personally think that they will be quite quick. That's why I've put them in P6. In P5, I'm going for Scuderia Alpha Tauri. Now, this is quite obvious. Pierre Gasly had an electric season last year. He was so good, and there's going to be more of the same for him because he's just going to get better and better. Yuki Tsunoda will be better this year, first year of F1, just, you know, getting used to the experience, getting used to driving these cars. And, yeah, I think he will be much better and much more consistent this year as well. Their car looks quick. Don't forget, they may have had some help from Red Bull, potentially, maybe, maybe not. But, yeah, I think Alpha Tauri will be just fine they will be one of the leading midfield teams i would say this season so i haven't got any concerns for them however now we've got the top four the big four teams if you like and as, as i was saying largely the pecking order is not going to change too much i don't think however in fourth place i'm going for mclaren now some of you may agree, some of you may not. As you know, I love the McLaren livery. Their car does look technologically advanced. However, they have had, like Williams, quite a few reliability issues. So, for example, all these brake problems that they suffered at the Bahrain test in particular, you know, they've been plagued with sort of little niggles, little issues, which are basically potentially keeping them from running at full potential. So, unless they get that sorted out, they're not going to be able to win races. It's that simple. I think, I think McLaren may well win a race because it'll be closer racing this year and I think Lando Norris in particular will get his first Grand Prix win but I just don't think they're gonna have the car to be able to quite be so consistent for a whole season in third place this is incredibly controversial however eight time constructors champions Mercedes will finish third in 2022, despite arguably having the best driver lineup. Lewis Hamilton, potentially the greatest driver of all time, partnered against Mr. Saturday. In my opinion, one of the best qualifiers on the grid, if not the best on his day, George Russell for his first season. Now, partly because, I'm going to say this honestly, Mercedes could be in trouble this year. They might not even be as high as third place. Because they really just haven't looked quick in testing. However, they might... However, you know, we all say every year that they say their car's slow and their car's crap and they're not going to be at the front. However, genuinely this time, it looks like there might be more problems than you think with that car. They practically got rid of their side pods for Bahrain, which could be interesting because the car is lighter. So they could just be testing rather than sandbagging. But also, Russell and Hamilton, I think, is going to be quite toxic. I really think it's not going to be quite to the extent of Rosberg and Hamilton's rivalry because Russell cares about the team. However, I think there are going to be the odd, there is going to be the odd flashpoint within that relationship this year, surely, because George is trying to prove his worth. I think there will be some cases when he beats Lewis Hamilton, and surely Lewis Hamilton. I mean, the guy's cracking on a bit. He's 37, I think, off the top of my head. So he's not going to be around for much longer either. So there is going to become a point where Lewis Hamilton is just going to drop off in a way. And he's just not going to be as strong anymore because that's just his body getting older. He's not going to be as good at starts. He's not going to be able to be quite so quick for a race duration. It's going to happen. So could that 2022 be here? Maybe. But I'm more focused on the car. I don't think it's going to be as good. MP2, 
We have Red Bull Racing. Now, with a defending driver's champion in Max Verstappen, I also think, you know, they've got Adrian Newey on board. They're going to have a quick car. He's It's as simple as he's one of the best designers in the world. He's one of the best engineers. Of course, they're going to have a quick car. Red Bull will be there or thereabouts. They've got the financial backing as well. They're just going to be so quick still, I think. They're going to be fighting at the front. But, I mean, obviously, it's going to be closer at the front this year. You know, McLaren and Ferrari and you know some other teams are going to be able to make the step up but Red Bull I think are going to be the only team potentially who's consistently always in the fight for podiums the only reason why I'm putting them P2 no disrespect to Sergio Perez but he's just not quite as quick as Verstappen particularly in qualifying qualifying is what lets him down he really comes into his element in the race so I think unless he improves his qualifying particularly at tracks where qualifying so key so for that you're talking Monaco, Zandvoort etc particularly at circuits where overtaking is difficult in the race I think he's is where qualifying is going to let him down and mean that he's not going to be able to score too many points so I mean apart he's, he's a fabulous driver of course he showed his quality many times Abu Dhabi and Turkey are just two instances off the top of my head but yeah that's why I'm putting Red Bull P2 and that means process of elimination I think Ferrari will win the Constructors' Championship in 2022. Finally, the Ferrari master plan will work out. The golden days are returning for the Prancing Horses because they also have a golden generation. Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc are two brilliant drivers. Both Sainz in particular is kind of almost in the prime of his career now. I think he's, what, 26? I can't remember that. You'll have to correct me. But he's just so good. And he beat Leclerc last year as well. I mean, it was close between them, but they're both super quick. You know, they're going to get so many points for that team. And also, their car looks technologically advanced. They've prepared hard for these new regs. They're going to be quick. They've shown that they've got some serious pace about them. Sainz is going to get multiple race wins this season. Leclerc is going to add to the two wins he got in 2019. So, yeah, it's going to be all smiles back at the Ferrari garage, if you ask me. I think Ferrari could potentially be the team to beat in 2022. So very quickly for you all, here is my constructors predictions. You can just have a look at those. It's just I'm aware the video is already 13 minutes long. And here on screen now is my top 10 predictions for the Drivers Championship. As you can see, a couple of interesting ones. Starting with the bottom, I think Magnussen might just sneak into the top 10 due to Haas having a decent car. McLaren, as I said earlier, might struggle a bit with reliability. Gasly will have another outstanding season for Alpha Tauri. Nothing against Perez being in P7, but I just think his Saturday lets him down too much. Russell and Hamilton, 4th and 5th, and I have put them in that order on purpose. As I said, I don't think Hamilton will be quite as strong this year. Who knows? I could be proven wrong. Signs Leclerc, 2-3. It's going to be very close between those two, very touch and go. That's why I said I think they will win the Constructors. However, I still think Max Verstappen could be a long way clearer of the rest because he's going to have such a good car, I think, this season. That's just about all there is to say. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your predictions are, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree or not. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Let's get to 500 subscribers. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and join my Discord. Both links are in the description below and I'll see you guys on the next time. Goodbye.